Hello, everybody. Today, I want to talk about an uh, important concept in digital control systems, which is called pulse transfer function. OK, so what is a transfer function? If we uh, talk about from a purely continuous time point of view, if we have a linear time dynamical system, OK, uh, we deal with continuous time inputs and continuous time outputs, OK? And uh, when we talk about transfer function, we generally talk about the Laplace domain expressions, x of s, y of s, and transfer function has a form of g of s, and we can write that y of s is equal to g of s, x of s. Okay, so let's assume that now we have a purely discrete time dynamical system. It's just discrete, everything in discrete domain. Uh, our outputs are discrete time sequences, inputs are discrete time sequences, okay? So we transform them in Z domain expressions using Z transform, Y of Z. We have G of Z and we know that Y of Z is equal to G of Z, X of Z. Okay, so what is pulse transfer function? So the idea is in digital control systems, we have both discrete time continuous time variables okay we have sampling elements such as like the id impulse sampler zero order hold uh, blocks uh, and this kind of uh, combined hybrid operators okay so what we can do is uh, we can try to write a relation between the continuous time input signal x of t and continuous time output signal y of t but technically this is not a linear time invariant uh, operation Okay, so it's technically needed time uh, periodic, but I will not talk about this uh, in this course. Okay, so it's kind of hard to talk about continuous time input and continuous time output. Okay, even if we have impulse effort. So what we do is, in order to talk about transfer function, okay, so we have an, let's say, uh, assume that we have a continuous time input x of t, okay, uh, or it can be purely discrete, uh, but we know that at some point it should be sampled inside this transfer function, okay, or outside this uh, transfer function block, okay. So what we do is in pulse transfer function, we consider x star of t here, okay, and x star, we assume that x star of t goes into the uh, this uh, block language structure, okay. And let's assume that we have an output y of t, and uh, even if we measure it in an, in an analog continuous time fashion, we build an, a fictitious uh, sampling operation here, okay, and obtain y star of t. Okay, so this is a continuous time signal, this is a continuous time signal, but we know that since it is an, a star uh, domain, uh, we can convert them into x of k and y of k, and pulse transfer function is technically discrete time transfer function between the, uh, let's clean it, Let's write it better, okay? So y of z is equal to g of z, x of z, okay? So pulse transfer function is nothing but a discrete time transfer function between the sampled input and sampled output, okay? Uh, but the basic idea is, goal is writing a transfer function in z domain, okay? So the relation between, for this system, x of t and y of t is not linear time invariant in general, okay? But relation between x star of t and y star of t is generally linear time invariant. Or at least you should build your systems uh, such that you achieve this linear time invariance. Okay, so let's analyze this uh, a little bit more. Deep. Okay, so uh, y of t, let's uh, write it in toy domain, is equal to uh, g of t minus tau x star of t, tau, t tau, okay, based on impulse response approach, because the g of s is a, a transfer function, it can have a continuous time uh, or a stars operator or zero holds, okay, let's assume that it's a continuous time transfer function, even if we know that it has discrete time components, okay, uh, and if we ignore the co uh, causality, it's for a general uh, time domain signal, we can write that, okay, this is good, okay, so x star of T is an impulse strain approach, and if we ignore that it is a causal uh, signal, uh, we can write it using infinite summation approach. K is from minus infinite to infinity, and we know that it starts from zero, but it's not uh, very important for the derivation. 
kt, okay, impulse t minus, not, not t, sorry for that, okay, let's put that, okay, tau minus k t d tau, okay, good. So what I'm going to do is, so it, y of t generally is given by this expression, okay, but I'm interested in y and t, right? Okay, for some n. I want the output at this sampling instance if I want to go this. Okay, uh, of course, I want to control this, but dealing with the sampled output for each this control system is much easier. Okay, so in this case, I can uh, write that. Okay, let's do it all together. Okay minus infinity to infinity y and t minus tau okay this is same thing k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x k t sigma tau minus k t d tau okay that's good so as you can see we can remove everything that doesn't that depend on tau to the outside okay so y and t is equal to, okay, k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x k t inside integral minus infinity infinity uh, g, okay, this is g also, and t minus tau sigma tau minus k t d tau. Okay, that's good. Everything's fine. Okay, so what I can do is I can just uh, take the integral easily because we have an impulse, okay? Uh, this integral is valid only when tau is equal to kt. In this case, y and t will be equal to simply k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x kt g, okay? And let's simplify it a little bit, m minus k times capital T. Okay, good. So, so now we have a nicer expression, okay, uh, and we can obtain this simple expression only because we are looking at the output at the sampling instance. If you want to look at the output in between two sampling instances, it's a much more complicated computation, which we, we don't care currently because of the post transfer function perspective. Okay, now what I can do is uh, I can write this equation as a purely discrete time framework, okay? So what I can write this, y of n is equal to, k is from minus infinity to infinity, okay? x of k times g n minus k. So what is this? We know that this is discrete time convolution, okay? In that case, I can write that y of n is equal to x of n convolved with g of n, and it is equal to g n convolution x of n. Okay, it's good. So now what I obtain is I obtain a discrete time in time domain, a linear time invariant dynamical system representation. It's impulse response. Okay. So what is the input x of n? What is out y of n? Uh, what is the impulse response representation? It is g of n. What is g of n? We obtain g of n like this. We have g of s. This is the like uh, combined uh, continuous time transfer function. Okay, so it can have a zero order hold, but we assume it as a uh, continuous time uh, transfer function because we can model zero hold using uh, the formula that we write in the previous lecture. If there are discrete time signals, we can uh, write them in terms of uh, x start uh, of versions, okay, g of s. What we do is we take the inverse Laplace of g of s to obtain g of t. We then sample the impulse response to obtain g of k, and somehow this sampled uh, impulse response acts like the impulse response representation for the discrete time signal. Okay, it's kind of seems 
uh, obvious, but it's not truly obvious because we are not sampling a signal. We are sampling an impulse response of a system. Okay. Uh, and then we can have this expression. And of course, since it is a discrete time coalition operation, if we write everything in Z domain, Y of Z is simply equal to G of Z times X of Z. Okay. And what is G of Z? G of Z is the Z transform of G K of T Z to power minus K. Okay. And as you can see, this is the like uh, sampled impulse response representation of this combined continuous time looking signal. Okay, very good. So let's try to make some remarks here. Okay, very good. Uh, so we know that y of s is equal to g of s times x star of s. Is that correct? I think it's correct. No problem with that because this is the whole idea. We then found that y of z is equal to g of z times x of z, where g of z and uh, g of s is related because uh, I can write that this is also equal to y star of s is equal to g star of s x star of s okay because z domain expression is closely related to the start of uh, domain expression by changing z and s i can obtain this so this means that if i sample y which means that sampling g of s x star of s should be equal to g star of s x star of s okay so this is great because it says that, okay, if you deal with the start signal, start Laplace transform, okay, and if you have like A of S, B of S, star, if any of them is in start operation, you can just simply say that this is equal to A star of S, B star of S, okay? Uh, it really simplifies our expression because this says that maybe we can keep everything in S domain using the start signal and sampling operation is simply uh, being careful and uh, assigning star to the uh, free versions. But technically this, we can easily say that, but this is not true. A of S times B of S, okay, star is not equal to A star of S, B star of S, okay. So this is true if your one of the expression in already start form, you can easily write this and then convert to uh, Z domain expression. But for example, let's say it is G1 of S, G2 of S, X star of S, and you want to start it. Technically, you can leave it like this, combine and X star of S. Okay. so. In the next video lecture or uh, online lecture, I will show some examples where we deal with the star signals and pulse transfer function. Uh, and I think when we solve examples, you will understand the concept better.